A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this 66th episode of the Together for Education webinars brought to you by Notebook. Week after week, since the beginning of this pandemic lockdown, we have been organizing this series of webinars and we have been humbled by the kind of love and support that we have received from the entire teaching community. We started with topics that were very curricular. We started with topics that related to the lockdown, to the pandemic experience. Slowly, we realized that there needed to be conversation around various other aspects of schooling. So we delved into topics like mental health, the power of why, the need for curiosity, and so many more. Today, we take on a very interesting topic. We are gonna talk about school commute. School buses have formed an integral part of the image that comes to our mind whenever we talk about schools. A row of yellow buses parked outside a wall almost always signifies a very large part of our school memories. Today, we are going to look at the various aspects, especially today when schools are about to reopen and many schools are still grappling with the issues around how to manage school commute. Before we start the session for today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Notebook. Notebook is an edtech product. We create small crisp videos tailored to the school curriculum. These videos are available both to the teachers for their online and offline classes, as well as to students to revise these topics at home. We at Notebook use art and the power of storytelling to make studies more fun and more interesting for young learners. Every topic before we get into the academic aspects of it starts with a small story that we like to call the interest builder. It tries to pique the natural curiosity of the child towards the subject, which leads to greater understanding and better internalization. What I'm gonna do now is play you a short snippet of one of the notebook videos so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Once a famous mathematician Professor G. H. Hardy came to visit the Indian mathematical genius S. Ramanujan in a taxi whose number was 1729. In their conversations, Hardy commented that 1729 was a dull number, to which Ramanujan disagreed to explain that 1729 is the smallest number that can be expressed as a sum of two cubes in two different ways. Since then, such numbers like 1729, 4104 and others have been named Hardy Ramunajan numbers. Hello and welcome to Notebook. In this video, we will learn about the properties of cubes and cube roots. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how we at Notebook use the power of art and storytelling to convey topics better to our students. Well, with that out of the way, it is now time to start today's session. Our first speaker today is Mr. Philip Barrett. Mr. Barrett retired as the deputy headmaster from the illustrious Dune School in Dehradun after 44 years of serving in education across various institutions. Mr. Barrett served the Dune School as housemaster, head of department, dean of activities, dean of student welfare, deputy headmaster, second master, and acting headmaster with great distinction. He also carried out a visioning exercise for the Doon School in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of British public schools and various schools in the US. Mr. Barrett qualified as a leadership trainer at Wellington College UK in the year 2000. He is also an athlete, an adventurer, and a naturalist. Sir, privileged to have you with us. Over to you. Thank you so much, Subayu. Um, um, thank you very much. And a good evening to you, um, Achin Abhishek. I don't know if he's there, uh, to our esteemed panelists and our guests who've tuned in. So as Subayu just said, over the last few months, we've spoken about a lot of uh, teaching, you know, um, ideas like curriculum and methodology um, and uh, schools in general, but eventually, all of this comes to naught unless we can get children to come to school and uh, get them back safely. Otherwise, uh, it's it's just a fast to have a school in a great, a, you know, have a great school, but you can't get kids there and back. 
Uh, I, for one, have been very, very fortunate because the last 33 years of my life, I spent in a residential school where my residence was uh, seven minutes away from my classroom. But my heart goes out to all those teachers and students who spend so many hours of their lives commuting in buses. And uh, getting children to school isn't as easy as it seems. And when I look back to my early school days, uh, being the son of an army man, I was bundled off to school in small cycle rickshaws, which had an extension on their back. And they resembled rickety tin boxes, uncomfortable and unsafe. And often we were six to nine of us crammed into one of these uh, little um, uh, contraptions. Later, I commuted in an open army truck with cold winds, biting winds blowing into me. And then uh, when I grew up into a senior, I had to play sport in school. And therefore, I had to take a bus to the station and uh, from the station, another bus to the gates of my cantonment. And the last kilometer was often on foot. And I reached home sometimes at seven o'clock, quite famished and tired. But this is nothing compared to what young Kenyan boys and girls do when they run to school and back many, many kilometers, which arguably makes them the best endurance runners in the world. Or where I live now in Uttarakhand, I've seen school children walk many, many kilometers through cedar and pine forests. And, um, you know, through, through, through forests which are, which are full of leopards and bears. And often we hear stories in the local press where children have gone missing. And sometimes on their way to school, they have to cross these very swift torrents of you know, rivers. And uh, they do this by sitting on a small metal uh, cradle or a carriage, which is fixed to an over, uh, to, a, to, a, to a cable um, by a pulley. And they pull themselves across this raging water, uh, often doing it many times a day. And even in, in the winter, it's, it's very, very dangerous. I've seen these kids, two or three of them in a small cradle being pulled across this river. And again, when I look around me into the towns of India, big and small towns, there's this surge of children heading to school each morning and back in the afternoons, often causing traffic jams and clogging the roads. And this journey is not without its hazards. A child spends about two hours a day in the bus. Even if one forgets that there are 250 million school children in India, one soon realizes the enormity of this figure when one ventures out onto the roads as of, at about 1 p.m. when schools are over for the day. And we see these yellow buses, as Shabayu just mentioned, plying on the roads, lines after lines, queues of them. And I must add that driving in Dehradun, where I live, ever since the COVID pandemic struck, has been much easier that there are so many, so few vehicles on the road now. Speaking of the yellow bus system, I read that it had originated in the US in 1939, thanks to a professor of education at the Columbia University who organized a conference which resulted in a law that had all buses painted a specific shade of yellow with black letterings across the side. And this color scheme, of course, uh, they say was the most visible. And as a general rule, I think all school buses all over the world now uh, are yellow and black. And then I glanced over the school bus rules in India, which is a very detailed report of the do's and don'ts. And it runs into a number of pages, but I don't believe it is ever followed to the letter. For instance, it speaks that every bus has to have CC cameras, apart from a certain specification that these buses have to comply to. It's not being followed. Despite this, there are many children who lose their lives in road accidents each year because of rash and negligent driving, who often drivers who are often on cell phones, poor traffic rules, substandard and overloaded buses, and sometimes even tractors. They're going to school on tractors, makeshift vans, and even on river boats. And they have to cross these unmanned railway crossings. Thousands of parents are worried that Nothing has changed even since the Supreme Court safety guidelines for school buses came into effect in 1997. And after 27 kids were killed in an accident in Delhi, among other things, the court said that every vehicle 
should have a conductor who has studied up to class 10 at the least. Now, in 2017, there were, the, there were five fatal road accidents involving school vehicles. In 2018, there were 16 accidents. This is all in the Delhi area, resulting in 10 deaths. But the parents' worries have risen after a 27 kids died in Himachal Pradesh when a, when a bus fell into a ravine. Now, India accounts, they say, for 11% of all road accidents each year in the world, of which 7% are children under the age of 18, which means school-going children. And this translates into 10,000 road deaths every year. And according to the global status report on road safety, uh, yeah, according to the Road Safety Act, um, <clears throat> traffic injuries are the first cause of death amongst children. Now, the data on the number of school kids who lose their lives in road accidents in India each year is unavailable. And that is why the government is delaying its badly needed school transport policy. Now, statistics show that about 57 to 60% of all children walk to school in India. Of course, this figure is slightly higher in rural areas and diminishes in metros. 6% of children cycle to school and about 12 to 15% of children use public transport. And the rest are either sent in private cars, carpools, of course, those who go to residential schools are the luckiest since these make only two trips to school each year. Transport to and from school is the top concern amongst parents. And often the choice of school that the parents select for their children will depend on whether a school offers the facility of good transport. And the concept of community school, if it was followed, would mean that a school would cater to all the students in a certain vicinity, a certain area. And this would cut down the transport time, the transport costs. But parents don't really follow this because the more wealthy a parent, the more well-to-do he is, there is a greater chance that he will choose his school, even if it is far away, because he can afford private transport. In the not so fortunate parents, they will tend to go to a school that's nearby thereby cutting down transport costs. Now, uh, in the early 90s, the concept of day boarding schools emerged, especially in the large metros. And this was because when families had, were nuclear and both parents had to work, it was better that the children stayed in school till about five o'clock rather than return at lunchtime. Because when they returned at lunchtime, there was no one at home to look after them. And so these children stayed in school, they did their homework, did their extracurriculars, did their sports, and they came back at a time when the parents too were returning home. And this concept caught on, but again, I say it's not really um, a very widespread in, the, in, in, uh, in, urban, in rural areas. I worked for some time as a consultant to a group of schools in Calcutta, Bangalore, and Delhi. And when I did a survey uh, on the parents, and uh, ask them what their worries were and what their concerns were. Their prime concern, especially in the Bangalore school, was the need for better and safer transport. Yes, there was academics and discipline and other such things that they did throw up, but the greatest concern was, I wish our children had a safer way of getting to and from school. Many of these children who had to stay back for extracurriculars and academics came back quite late and parents were very, very upset. Now, also, I mean, don't forget, we read about in the papers about kidnappings, about molestations, and there was there's so many hazards of sending young children to school. Today, even private cars, sending a kid in a private car is not safe. There are parents who have cameras fitted in cars as well. Now, the school I worked in in Bangalore was at a crossroads, a very congested crossroads. And there was no parking space near the school, nor within the school compound. And therefore the school did not have buses of its own, nor would the public transport system, uh, you know, get involved with supplying their buses. So the entire school, which is about 3000 strong, all the children and teachers walked, cycled, or arrived by the hundreds in private 
cars, small vans, three wheelers. And it was chaotic to see the school in the morning. Of course, not too bad in the morning when it was eight o'clock, but by one o'clock when they were breaking up, it was like the largest mela you could ever think about. And <clears throat> so I would say to end this talk that no matter how good a school is or how well qualified its staff and diverse its program, unless the transport system that takes the children to school and back isn't well organized, children, uh, parents will never be at ease and will always demand that the school organize better transport. As some parents, as one parent remarked, we should urge the government, the UN and all stakeholders to consider the right of safe transportation along with the right to good education. And with that, Shabayu, I hand this over to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for that wonderful opening. However, I must say, I do feel sorry for your doing school boys in one way. The kind of mischief that you are up to twice a day on the way to school and on the way back, your do school boys definitely missed out on that. That is true. That is true. Definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after that wonderful opening introduction, it is now time to move to our second speaker. Our next speaker is Ochin Bhattacharya. Ochin is the founder and CEO of Notebook. A chartered accountant by training, Ochin was a director at Deloitte prior to starting Notebook. He has worked in India and abroad in various senior capacities in GE, PwC, KPMG, and Deloitte. He is a fellow of the ICAI and a member of CPA Australia. He is also the recipient of the prestigious Indian Achievers Award. Ochin is an avid reader and a passionate traveler with keen interests in economics, history, literature, and philosophy. He is a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce, and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly. He is also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates and contributes significantly to their brand strategies. Ochin, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Shubhai, am I audible? Ochin, I can see you. Your audio is breaking up a little bit. I hope your connection is fine. Yeah, uh, connection is completely fine. Better now? Yeah, it's fine now. Yeah. I once again welcome all of you to today's session on a topic which is of significance and concern to parents and educators around the globe. Especially during this time when we are waiting for schools to reopen safely. Now, as far as this particular topic is concerned, to start with, I'll try to take a more holistic view of it. So I was going through school commute around the world and trying to understand this topic from a global perspective. Especially in terms of how things were in pre-COVID era. Now we see a picture which is very, very diverse. For example, in some remote fishing communities in Philippines, school children row donated yellow school boats provided to the Yellow Boat of Ho Foundation. In Venezuela, in the capital, some child children ride a gondola lift to school. In the mountains of Southwest China's Siachen province, a steel ladder was constructed against an 800 meter bluff that children climbed to reach their boarding school in an isolated clifftop village. Now, whether children hop onto a school bus, row a boat, or climb a cliff to get to school, how the commute can have major impact on their health. I went through some research papers and I came across a very detailed and informative research conducted by the National Institute of Public Health in Mexico. According to the researcher, Alejandra Mota, active commuting to school or work is a way of easily incorporating physical activity during the day. She defined active commuting as any transportation 
from one place to another. That involves physical activity such as walking, cycling, roller skating, or skateboarding. Now, active commuting, for instance, the practice of walk, walking school buses, you know, very much prevalent in various countries in West. So walking school bus basically means involving children walking to and from school together, guided by an adult through safe routes. But this seems to be more of thing of the past than present. I was going through some numbers with regard to various modes of commute globally before we come back and see what's happening at home. In US, for instance, in 1969, 48 percent of children between the ages of 5 and 14 either walk or bicycle to school according to National Center of Safe Rules. So this is 1969. If you look at what's happening recently, so the latest data that I got was 2009. So 69, 2009. 69, 48%, 2009, this percentage has come back, come down to 13%. So only 13% children are either walking or cycling to school. A report published by US Center for Disease Control and Prevention, which is in 2016, found out that in most schools, 10% or fewer students either walk or bike in the morning on an average day, less than 10%. Many parents report that children do not walk to and from school due to distance, concerns about traffic, crime, weather, among other factors. So out of 25 million school children in the US, more than half of the nation's school children take school buses, according to American School Bus Council. Other students might come to school by car or in a big city, subway, train. Also, there are various other options like ride sharing services like Uber. Although most ride sharing apps guidelines say that you can't book till you're full 18. Yet in other countries around the world, if we take a more, you know, holistic view and we see what's happening around the world, walking by far is the most common way children get to school. And if you look at the unfortunate deep inequalities that still persist, for instance, I was going through some numbers in Mexico. In Mexico, a very recent study analyzed around 3,000 children, school students, in the age bracket of 10 to 14 years, and found out that roughly around 70% walk to school, and a very handful, around 2%, use bicycles. So 70%, the overwhelming majority walking to school in a country like Mexico. So as went through a research paper in the Journal of Physical Activity and Health 2015 in Mexico, which says that Mexico is a very diverse country and children may either walk by themselves for hours to go to school. For example, there are instances where children walk for more than three to four hours in order to reach school. In remote areas, they may get to school riding a horse or a donkey or even on a boat. From Mexico, let's go to South Africa. According to general household survey conducted by government's national statistical service in South Africa, around 65% students walk to school, 65%. While 10% use a private car and around 7% use a taxi. The survey also showed around 11% using a vehicle hired by a group of parents, carpooling. A very handful, around 4% using a bus and only around 3% using a school bus, which is provided by the school. Now, another very important aspect that I saw in the survey that says that there are still a number of primarily rural areas in South Africa 
where physical access to school remains extremely problematic and children may be forced to use horse or donkey drawn carts wait to rivers cross dangerous roads or engage in other unsafe travel it is also critical to understand the deep inequalities that still persist in south african schooling which can be traced back to apartheid era policy and practice adding that inequalities have led to schools in historically white areas having certain resources that those schools in historically black majority areas lack access to hence children may travel far and wide to attend schools that provide a perceived higher quality of education due to those resources but the means to travel commuting for hours for small children essentially takes away hours and hours of productive time from south africa we come back to europe and we see what's happening in uk for instance and we were discussing about active traveling habits uk shows that a drop in a kid's active traveling habit as they age for instance in great britain around 46% of 5 to 10 year olds walk to school but as far as little older children are concerned in the age bracket of 11 to 6 16 46% drops to 38% reason being this that fewer older children might walk to school since many more primary schools might be located closer to home than secondary schools so if secondary schools are far from home instead of walking children prefer other modes of transport now researchers worry that a reduction in active commuting could contribute to the ongoing rise in childhood obesity which is a cause of concern world health organization calls child obesity as one of the most serious public health challenges of the 21st century so after taking a tour around the globe and after seeing what's happening around let's see what's happening in our own country we start with a very we start with a small but very inspiring story i'll tell you about a fellow countryman who have set an example of mental resolve jalandhar naik a vegetable vendor i was reading about him a vegetable vendor in a rural area has been hailed as an education trail blazer he spent 2 years he spent 2 years clearing a roadway through the mountains to build a road so that his kids could make it to school every day his three sons trudged over narrow rocky pathway as part of their 6 hour commute to and from school so for 2 years mr nayak who is 45 years old spent 8 hours a day building a wider road through the mountain terrain around his home i was reading about him in various national as well as international journals the 5 mile long road he built provides a safer more direct route for his children and significantly cuts down on the travel time this may be one one incident i'll not call it a isolated incident this might be one incident but having said that numbers prove that as a nation we have done a far better job in terms of making schooling accessible closer to home i'll come to that later according to a survey but it's also mentioned almost 60% of students in india travel to school on foot here again the percentage varies in girls girls around 62% and boys around 58% again there is a variation in terms of urban and rural areas second most preferred mode of travel is public transport around 12% using this now i am also going through various concessions which are offered to children and the ratio in which they are being availed by children 
school children. The ratio shows roughly around 50% of students who receive concession in public transport actually using it. Numbers are higher in rural areas vis-a-vis -vis urban areas. Rural areas around 51% children using concessions. In urban areas, roughly around 40%. Now, I was telling you about as a nation how we have done a far better job in terms of making schooling accessible, you know, in terms of distance. The distance between students, household and school, if you study it's found out that in rural areas, roughly 93% of household reports availability of primary school within one kilometer from the house. At urban areas, it's roughly 87%, 87% of household reporting availability of primary school within one kilometer. That definitely is an achievement. Now, that was primary school. If you look at upper primary, 68% of rural households and 80% of urban households reporting availability of upper primary schools within one kilometer. Now, the Constitution of India, Article 21A, guarantees the right to elementary education for all children. Right to education has been guaranteed by the Constitution. But unfortunately, Bharat also mentioned about this, unfortunately, accessing this basic right comes at a cost for many children who risk their lives daily as they, have, as they travel to school. Road traffic injuries and being the leading cause of death among children. I was going to the study in 2019 by Niemans, which reports that 40% of child injuries happen in road. In Hyderabad, for instance, and when I say 40%, I'm putting a number from Bangalore. In Hyderabad, for instance, every one out of six child surveyed reports a road traffic injury during school journey during preceding 12 months. That's a shocking number, right? One out of six child suffering from road traffic injury during last 12 months. Urban transport system have so far ignored the needs of children and definitely requires an urgent relook for the future. Now we're discussing about pre-COVID era. Definitely given current circumstances, when we all look forward, to schools reopening safely. There are no other concerns that I'm sure esteemed educators here and parents. Definitely there are some other concerns that they have, that all of us have. Concerns about safety, social distance, sanitation. Now COVID-19 pandemic has really pushed cities across the world to prioritize more sustainable modes of transport. We are seeing this everywhere, walking, cycling, measures which can improve safety and quality of life for all, including children. And cities globally have taken this as an opportunity to make school commutes safer for children. Currently, government and school administration definitely focuses on how to seamlessly educate children through the pandemic. Now that schools are closed, but schooling is on. But when the impact of pandemic wins and children eventually return back to school, we should seriously consider how our streets can be made safer and healthier for children. Given that parents are apprehensive about things like, as we mentioned, shared modes of transport, safe, sustainable, feasible alternatives, failing which our cities will see a surge in private vehicles being used for school journeys which naturally will lead to devastating impact on safety, public health, and quality of life. Now, few recommendations which can definitely help to make things better. Definitely enabling walking and cycling around schools is a very, very important step. I completely agree that what works in waste may not work in our country given the density of population. So when we look at a solution, we also need to consider the ground realities, no denying the fact. Having said that, India is not all about 
congested metropolitan cities. We are also discussing about B towns. We are discussing about villages. We are discussing about planned townships. Thus, good quality footpaths, bicycle lane, safe frequent crossing, traffic calming measures are very important. If you look at global cities, for instance, already thinking along these lines, I was going through some reports post pandemic, how policymakers around the world are looking at this. Amsterdam, for example, already known as the bicycling capital of the world, is making 1600 bikes available for students who do not have a bike, without bike. Brussels, Belgium, promoting bike to school initiatives in a big way. Thus, making school, making again, that's one way. Second is making public transport an attractive option. I was going through some numbers. In Bangalore and Mumbai, around 20 studies indicate that 23% of school trips by children are made using public buses. Now, bus journeys definitely are relatively much safer, no denying the fact. But the walk to and from, to and fro from bus stop and waiting at the bus stop can be highly unsafe. Thus, bus stops around the school should be clearly designated, well designed, with safe, comfortable waiting spaces, bus shelters, and bus bay. Transit schedules and routes should be rationalized to better cater to children traveling during school hours. Also, in the current scenario, public buses need to be financially supported to operate with high frequencies and sanitation measures along high density school routes. Another very interesting aspect that I saw uh, being practiced, very interesting concept being practiced around the world, starting school streets in residential areas. So these are streets adjoining schools that are temporarily closed for motorized traffic, similar to no entry boards that we see near many of our schools as well, during school drop-off and pick-up times. A very simple way of prioritizing safety, health, well-being of children. So recently, a lot of emphasis I see in a lot of European cities like London. Multiple advantages for children, including walking, cycling, limiting air pollution near the schools, reducing congestion, no honking. Now, since pandemic, the relevance has definitely increased. So these are some of the measures that I wanted to talk about. Of course, when, when it comes to school buses, I think the single most important topic I leave it to our esteemed panel to deliberate on this. We have a great panel today, a very experienced, wonderful panel, and very diverse panel. So I look forward to their views on this particular topic, and also with regard to how we can make our school commute far safer. So these are some aspects that I wanted to share. I thank all of you for giving me a patient hearing. Over to you, Shubai. Thank you, Achin. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. I'm sure this will provide a great starting board for the panel discussion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the part I know you have all been eagerly waiting for. Our panel discussion on transportation in schools. As Ochin mentioned, we are very fortunate to have with us a very, very diverse and a fantastic panel. We have with us Mr. Pradeep Agarwal, who is the CEO of the Heritage Group of Institutions in Kolkata. He's an experienced chief executive officer with a demonstrated history of working in the higher education industry, skilled in negotiation, talent management, coaching, business development, and employee engagement. His strong business development professional with a certification in leading people and organization focused in leadership from RS3 Institute of Executive Education, the Wharton School University of Pennsylvania. He's also done a masterclass for directors from the World Council for Corporate Governance from London, UK. Prior to being CEO of the Heritage Group of Institutions, he has worked at the South Point School, which holds the Guinness Book World Record for being Asia's largest school. Sir, privileged to have you with us. We also have with us Mr. Ali Raza Rizvi. Mr. Rizvi is the Senior Marketing Manager at Volvo Aisha Commercial Vehicles, handling the bus division. He is responsible for marketing activations and brand management for the bus vertical. He has been in the automobile industry for the past 13 years in various roles in aftermarket sales and marketing in both passenger cars and commercial vehicles. Mr. Rizvi has been a prolific quizzer and debater in his school days. And today we are privileged to have him here. We also have with us Ms. Poonam Raizada, who is 
the principal and entrepreneur in the World Way International School in Bhopal. Ma'am holds an MSc in Zoology, a BA, an MBA in HR, and a CTET degree. She's had 28 years of experience in empowering future generation through education. She has been a PGT biology for 15 years, a vice principal for 10 years, and a principal for 15 years across various institutes like the Birla School, Army School, Bharatiyam, and ECS. She, her, she lives by the motto, try and live up to your dreams and passions, as only that will fetch you the ultimate happiness. Ma'am, privileged to have you with us. What I will do now is I'll stop my share and switch on my camera so that we can see each other and start the discussion. Puna ma'am, Ali, if you could yes. please switch on your cameras. Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. Thank yes. you so much for being here. Mr. Agarwal, good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening. Mr. Rizvi, good evening. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Absolute privilege to have all of you with us. Before I get to the specific questions, I would go around the table once for your initial thoughts on today's topic. If I may start with uh, Puna ma'am. Oh, all right. Give me a moment. Uh, good evening, everybody. Talking about the... Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear. Okay. See, I am in school world, listening about so many serious things, the accident ratios, the dangers, the pollution. I want to talk on a very soft part because I'm dealing with small children, teenagers. I just wanted to tell you that before COVID, every day it was my routine to see the fleet of buses coming to my school and the smiling faces coming out from them, which has made my day every day. I'm so lucky that I am in such noble profession that I can see the smiling faces in the morning with a lot of gratitude for all, all of us. I'm really fortunate. Even the doctors who have studied so much, they see the painful faces, people in pain, right? So that way. But for last 10 months, whenever I'm going to my institution, seeing so, uh, such a large line of buses standing outside, not moving, there is no uh, a horn sound or the drivers are sitting and they don't have any work to do, has made me realize to think about this lifeline of schools called buses. These buses, then I started thinking of why buses? That had made me to think that they are very important part of the school as well as for higher education. And all three major stakeholders, that is parents, school and society are very much benefited. Thanks to the person who has invented school bus because parents are very much concerned as they know that their children will be always in the school on time. Through GPS tracking, they can see where my child is. They know that my kids will be making new friends while commuting. They know that the child will be taking care of their things as parents are not there for the support and guiding them minute to minute. Pair children, they have the habit of rising early in the morning because they know they have to catch bus as bus will not be waiting like the parents must be waiting in the car. Then there is a peace of mind to the parents. Few advantages which parents are always enjoying when they are sending their children to school buses. School also on the benefit because the buses facilitate classes to start daily on time. Parents' inquiries are least because through GPS they come to know when my child is reaching to the school. And School gets the additional ben benefit of providing an additional facility of buses, which is catering children from different areas of the school, different vicinities to come and enjoy the education of their own choice. Society obviously is being benefited as there are less vehicles on the roads and there is low accident risk, I feel so. So salute to all those 
who are uh, managing buses because buses are making me to meet so many beautiful faces in the morning and we are able to teach them in that way now after pandemic what will be the life of these buses i know there is no other alternate as we have started our normal lives going to uh, malls parties gatherings i know when schools are going to reopen for the children they will commute through the buses only because there is no other option and we have to take up the life to the normalcy by reaching into that but that makes us to think on about the sanitizing cleaning and giving the safety measures to the children and it's not very difficult as we were cleaning the buses every day we have to sanitize the buses in the morning as well as in the evening we have to thermal check each and every child before boarding to the bus we have to see the handle bars the seat belts the stability bars of the buses that they are being sanitized properly maybe by sodium hypochlorite or whatever it is whatever is more safer for the students yes we have to keep an extra check on their seating arrangements we have to keep check that children are not sitting two in a seat of two seater obviously the number has to be reduced and there are other safety measures but it's not so difficult more important is to realize make the children realize that the life has to come to normal use the buses with full safety with full safety safety measures and come to school and start using these buses buses as i said earlier the lifeline of the school has to be there always with all safety measures so i'm still waiting for the time when all those yellow lifeline will be reaching to my school and i am expecting other fellow members to throw the light on other usefulness and other aspects of using this was my view as a school principal right thank you so much thank you so much ma'am uh, mr agarwal if i may come to you next yeah sir i know the heritage group does some very interesting things with school buses i will come to that in a special question later on but your initial thoughts sir yeah thank you thank you achin and your team for inviting me today today's panel discussion and thank you punam ma'am for <laughs> highlighting and and uh, mentioning the concern what what we all are facing in today's pandemic because when bus, buses are off and the students are not there it is it is like a just lone buildings and and yes. and and there is no life but let let me first salute all the teachers parents and other stakeholders of every school for engaging their students actively on online platform until now it has become a new normal for all of us during such pandemic situation i believe that such that we need to continue such uh, online learning in even in the hybrid form in future yes uh, regarding say transportation services i think i think this is a very critical uh, operations of any school uh, uh, when when we treat it differently like it is it is not just uh, commuting from and to schools uh, rather it is a learning experience as well, as well so so i would like to share some protocols what we follow so being a day boarding school say we are running uh, usually this is 11 hour school from mm. up and down so basically started our bus services as integrated with our curriculum as a, as a compulsory service so every teacher every student has to come by bus and go by bus so when we started initially in 2002 uh but uh, the we 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 thought of that that there is a huge traffic the road traffic and what is the solution so we we invited a panel of doctors basically from our parents as well as of uh, experts from various hospitals that what is the solution so they have mentioned uh, you should not have a bus without ac we asked that our school is not air conditioned sir why why we will include ac so then they explained and they have shown the research studies that 
that commuting if there is a traffic and if if there is honking and other things are happening then then it will it, will, it is a, it is a huge noise pollution for smaller kids basically the age group between 5 and 10 so it is more hazardous this noise pollution than the that uh, air pollution so then we decided to go for air conditioned buses and and it was it was so difficult because we invited all the uh, vendors from across the country and nobody was uh, ready to introduce such facility say mahindras and uh, that swaraj mazda because because that was uh, that time that air conditioned buses in 2002 was was not there particularly eastern part of the country so anyway we introduced uh, this air conditioned buses during that time on our own with the help of carrier and some other vendors so so now we have a very large fleet a bus fleet of 83 buses 52 seater and i think it is one of the largest and we have got around 20 acre uh, campus uh, with with a huge uh, parking space and it is the eastern part of the near science city kolkata and but but because of this compulsory lot of uh, parents and lot of uh, rating agency visited us and they told why it is so compulsory because how do you cater everyone because we have to deal with the vip parents uh, from minister and some some restricted services embassies and others so so they would like to avail of their own vehicle so we told no we our vision is that all are equal so so we must ensure that 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 nobody should so that i am i am using mm-hmm. rickshaw and i am using mercedes uh, so that so that all are equal so that that was one of the uh, purpose what we did second thing we introduced that compulsorily travel travel of teachers by school buses because they come by bus and go by bus the since we are a day boarding school they have morning breakfast lunch evening snacks together it it is it is a learning experience it is it is not that just you commute so teachers are accompanying the children every day in every bus in every route and apart from the lady escort which is there basically for the safety of girl and child so we have introduced that and when we analyze regarding the cameras because these cameras now cctv cameras are utilized in all the buses so when we discovered uh, so basically in country more or less it, it, are, it is three cameras in every buses two in the in between the and one in the driver side but we introduced four five cameras basically four inside so that there should be a proper coverage with sound apart from gps and one is in front of bus because generally any accident happening we don't know uh, which side what happened and sometimes who's blame and what is the problem so it is also good to know that how accident took place it is not just to cover inside the bus so we introduced that also and once uh, recently uh, some agencies came that since uh, you have introduced the compulsory bus facility so lot of schools there are say 1000 cars coming and it is a huge road traffic as well so in our case people, the students are on time basically they have to come by bus so all 3200 students plus 400 teachers and other staffs are on time and 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 it it is is also uh, supporting the environmental pollution like like a lot of carbon emission if there are 1000 cars and if there are less number of buses so so this is also a big support we got some this pointers on a national and international basis because in us some agency came some visit, visits came actually 18 country ambassador visited us uh, since now uh, since our inception uh, so so lot of parameters are important i think we need to go for best practices and even even uh, in our case the breakfast lunch and evening snacks are compulsory it is the total vegetarian schools so we have more or less uh, 60% population who are non veg and they have changed into veg and most of the bengalis so so it is also and they thanked us that they have changed their habits and we suggested we told that 
we are offering see uh, only 190 meals in a year where where 365 days are there so you can you can have your non veg meals at home so this also i think developed a lot of uh, uh, understanding and health thing like like we are uh, we have hired the sodexo international so all sorts of uh, this combination of uh, this uh, how much of calorie and uh, what sort of, what sort of foods and all these parameters are being taken care of so and there also you can't bring and if if somebody is uh, sick so they are getting their specialized food according to the requirement by the doctors so so i think uh, this uh, transport is a very critical criteria because both at the arrival and departure principal and entire admin staff and other teachers are there just to see that every child boarded the bus pro- properly because because anything goes wrong you are finished and there are 1 to 2% changes because somebody is going to mama uh, masi's place or some some other mm-hmm. place due to any change Mm. of uh, routine so it is uh, totally computerized so so uh, so that is also one of the critical situation and since lot of vips are there so we need to take care that also but i think uh, the innovation is also taking place uh, in in respect of transportation we are planning to go for electrical vehicle which i think which is which is also a, a great need in future to support the environment and uh, and uh, 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 mr achin already uh, shared uh, the this best practices in global environment and lot of challenges about the accident and other things i think if all school follows the same principle the compulsory bus facility we may save a lot of uh, the problem of environmental pollution yes it is a big deal to maintain that sort of fleet but it is cheaper from the parents point of view and parents are looking for such facility because they feel that i am safe now because putting with the other services it is very risky and i think we can we can innovate in such a manner that cost of transportation can be minimized uh, by by lot of utilizing lot of uh, Uh, combinations and i think uh, i i i i have shared my experience if any questions come up so i am happy to respond sure sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you for sharing uh mr rizvi i'll come to you next i think this is a very interesting panel because it is not very often that we have the supply side sitting with the demand mm, side yes right <laughs> uh so mr rizvi your initial thoughts So first of all, thank you, Shivayu, for inviting me in this very interesting panel, and uh, really honored to be part of this panel, in which uh, very, like you said, it's very different for me to be talking about uh, something which is not pure numbers or not commercial part of it or aspect of it, and getting to understand uh, this side of the, I wouldn't won't call it business, but this side of the society. On a lighter note, we used to uh, hear stories from our parents. that how they used to travel across rivers you know 10 kilometers and they used to like it used to be quite a deal for them to reach school and once i came into this business of mobility transport and i went to far away places all the rural areas and all the places where uh, you can't really talk about your own privilege i realized that there are such places where it's very difficult uh, not only to get education but even a glass of water it some people have to walk 10 miles and they just uh, you know those are those unfortunate parts in the country so then i realized that this there is a lot at stake as far as mobility solutions are concerned and uh, uh, as far as schools are concerned ma'am said that she is very thankful for people who invented the school bus so i won't take uh, i sure won't take credit for that but the yellow color of the school bus which is very very uh, prominent in india that was actually developed by aishar uh, along with the institute of technology delhi way back in 1986 and the government of india so somewhere that uh, yellow part uh, which is the favorite color for aishar has been uh, inst- instituted by us and uh, we take pride in that 
having said that uh, uh, yes uh, uh, there are uh, uh, there are difficulties there are a lot of areas as a young parent for me also when i was finalizing school for my own kid uh, one of the main reasons for me to choose was definitely even though you can say that we come from a privileged section of the society one of the main reasons for us to choose a school was uh, uh, we chose heritage only sir at the end but uh, uh, one of the main reasons was that because it is closer to us and the hassle of two working parents is met by a safe and sound commuting bus which is there uh, safety is of paramount importance when it comes to children and i think uh, uh, having said that uh, aishar or vcv we manufacture the uh, safest buses so we have some 40 safety features in the school bus and i think uh, just saying that doesn't matter but I, because at the end of the day it's the parents and uh, and the students who have to go through that and uh, it is very very important that all those safety features they walk in a school bus uh, i was listening to mr bhattacharjee's uh, uh, address in the beginning and i could i couldn't help but notice that uh, this is not just a problem in india india uh, somewhere grapples with the problem of infrastructure in public transport uh, we are moving towards electronic mobility but i feel that that is also quite far right now as far as uh, uh, commute or even more when it comes to the uh, commuting of uh, school children is concerned because they would have to be a lot of testing to ensure that there are no failures there are no goof ups when it comes to actual employment of those uh, solutions but uh, somewhere the public infrastructure has to improve to ensure that a child is safe when he is sitting in a public transport and that is the reason why a lot of parents they want their kids to be uh, actually personally dropped uh, and uh, uh, to their schools uh, i come from a generation where my parents uh, encouraged me to take chances and take dangers we would still go into those rickety auto rickshaws or those uh, uh, very very flimsy rickshaws uh, during my time i i remember uh, we used to play and those friendship that i formed even during those small rides was very very important uh, bringing back that commute now and ensuring that it is safe for our parents is very important because it brings out a sense of social behavior uh, in our kids which i feel is lacking these days because of all the mobile and the screen time that they get these days i think just being part of a uh, a small this uh, i would say a ritual of going to school with other kids is very important for them to get back that social uh, you know enigma that social behavior that they i see a lot of students lacking now it's very important for them uh, apart from that uh, it also ensure that the whole school system works like a well oiled machine schools the buses come on time the classes start on time there is a fixed route everything becomes kind of a routine and that also helps the parents it also helps the student community in route that school that commute that happens they also get to understand what are the problems that they are, that what are the assignments that they are, that they have to face in the course of the day so having said that bringing back that commute and uh, also considering the fact that the environment we have to save the environment also so all those kids going in one bus is much more environment friendly than all of them going through their private vehicles being dropped off making a lot of noise pollution a lot of you know uh, a uh, carbon emissions happening so i think that is very important and wherever we look towards this kind of a solution we try and we try to look outside the country and see all those uh, countries where this is happening uh, where public commute be japan where the subway is one of the um, uh, major source of uh, transport for them or sweden and norway where they uh, encourage kids to t- walk or do cycle uh, but still the uh, carbon emission part is less so somewhere we also need to bring in the government into this the government regulation and somewhere we need to make sure that the government authorities understand and realize that that there has to be a dedicated system uh, in uh, bus transport system in which uh, all these uh, parents and students and teachers are safe and they are uh, carefree when they are taking this commute so i feel uh, uh, having said that i feel uh, we are not very far when uh, this these kind of developments will start happening uh, i live in a city like gurgaon where public transport is not very good and uh, i don't uh, allow my kid to venture out after 7 o'clock at night because 
safety concerns are there even i don't let them use any part of public transport because uh, you know it's gurgaon right so uh, but i would desperately want that to change i would want uh, my family to be independent i would want them to use a bus uh, i would want them to experience the way that coming from a small town i have experienced public transport and it has been i i have had the best experiences of my life using a public transport and i would want my family also to use that i would want my uh, friends to use that but there is a lot uh, of things that there is a lot way there is a long way for us to go into that and to ensure that we uh, achieve that level of safety and care free for them so uh, that is all from my side uh, coming uh, to the covid part of it i would say uh, like ma'am has very uh, rightly poonam ma'am has very rightly covered uh, there has to be sanitization there has to be cleanliness no doubt but i foresee a lot of uh, i would say uh, innovations happening in bus industry which would enable that all these uh, efforts which are being undertaken to keep the bus safe and sanitized will be done at local level say for instance a touch free hand sanitizer or a hand or a, a mm. safety dispenser uh, uh, disinfectant dispenser uh, there would be uh, special places for uh, disposing of trash and such biomedical waste if it has to be used on the buses uh, our buses now are equipped with the fire safety equipments and uh, alarm systems which is mandatory everywhere but such uh, uh, because drivers keep on changing for every bus so to ensure that there are certain things there for the drivers also maybe a quick uh, a testing or temperature uh, checking uh, uh, thermometer stand there which is there for drivers and for the kids when they are entering uh, those disinfectant pipes on the roof which will uh, dispose of uh, mist every time there is a change of staff or there is a change of uh, uh, if it is a long distance route so that would go off uh, uh, rhythmically after every 10 minutes or 12 minutes so these are and uh, uh, i can foresee or I, and i can still see some of these innovations being adapted by our local bus body manufacturers who are doing these kind of things to ensure that people come back on road people keep adapting the buses uh, as their primary source of transport when it comes to commuting for the students uh, and uh, i feel that the time is not uh, very far when uh, you know buses will once again become a very important part of commute for all of us students so shivayu that's all from my side uh, thank you thank you thank you so much ali uh, i will take a couple of questions that we have got from the audience here yes. before i get back to my own questions uh, mr uh, narasimhamba says what are the safety measures that can be adopted in school buses to get the students back to school safely and parents can believe us to send their children i this is regarding the return after covid also mr roy de silva who is the principal of the st stephen school togan uh, near chandigarh he is saying unfortunately st stephen school togan is not a neighborhood school hence efficient school bus service is the lifeline how do you make it financially viable with the sops in the post covid era uh, if an urgent solution is not arrived at there is a possibility that the bulk of the students could move to other schools within their neighborhood which i think is a very very big possibility uh, if i may come to poonam ma'am first ma'am mm. um, post covid era yeah yeah what are the changes that you see in the bus system thank you for the questions those who have uh, sent us if you talk about the financial aspect i don't think cleaning sanitizing making buses safer include lot of money will be including lot of money after covid why because our buses are all, are already ready let me just give you a list which my bus transport in charge has given me i asked him what are the safety measures can you tell me he said ma'am start writing i'm telling you what safety measures are we taking so just listen the list is too long already we are having that it is has the speed limit device it has got the proper indicators the necessary mirrors it is covered by rubber it has control on the doors its entry its uh, opening and come it has got the emergency exit and the children have the evacuation training it is has the gps tracker it has got cameras it has got first aid kit it has got licensed driver we have the police verification of drivers and then he said we have fire extinguisher we have the alarm systems this was the answer of that fellow and he said our buses are ready with this 
Now, what is left is it is the cleaning, sanitization, and keeping extra eye on the children and their activities while commuting. So I don't think it will be taking much. Again, if any school has to spend more on buses, I will suggest them to have blended activities because now parents are very much used to of Zoom activities. And this year I found my activities and my competitions were of far better standards because it was from the houses. And parents, they participate along with the children. For example, my annual function is in next week and it's all being recorded. All functions, all the performances are being done by parents and children together. We have made the groups. This group is for grandfather and the son, grandson. This is for mother and, and the competition was there. Whomsoever has won the competition, now they are performing an annual function. Without spending a single penny, we are having our annual function this year. So next year, we are planning to have competitions. Fancy dress reached to a very high level because parents, they made their children to be ready and their homes only. So we find this new system that in spite of spending a lot of money on physical presence of the students in activities, this year I'm planning all these activities in the evening when parents can help out their children. So if I'm cutting down my uh, expenses over there, I will definitely be putting it in the buses. So I don't think uh, there will be any load to any of the school. Yes, we need a proper planning and proper budgeting every year. Thank you for the questions. And I hope I have uh, uh, served a purpose for what you have asked. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, your plans when you open post COVID because 82 buses, that's yes. your fleet, right? Getting all of that sanitized and COVID ready mm. is a tough one. I'm sure Ali is furiously taking notes that this is primary market research. His client sitting in front of him <laughs> telling him exactly what they want. This is every marketer's dream. Sorry, Mr. Agarwal, please. Actually, uh, there are a lot of challenges post-COVID. Mm. Like we are not inviting all the children. Yes. So in the 52 seater, there is a social distancing. So basically, uh, once uh, in, in a three-seater uh, seat, there is only one child, what we have planned initially. So it will be ad, uh, included, all the children will be included in phases, but it is basically one-third. So there is a cost factor. So one-third student in, in a 50-seater bus, you, you uh, must understand that what will be the impact cost-wise. So there will be more trips and uh, and classroom yes. teaching. So this is number one. Number two is all the COVID protocols we are applying, like sanitizing of buses. It is it is by fumigation. So this is all auto. It, is, it has been integrated in auto mode. So every bus is being before departure and before after arrival. It has to be sanitized properly. Number one. Number two, each uh, that bus escort is having the temperature scanner. So while they are boarding the bus, so they must check the temperature. If it is abnormal, they, they have to say thank you to the parents because we have made that circular clearly because any abnormality in that, because that is, it, it is a way of protecting the, ch the child with the temperature. Sometimes it is not being checked by the parents from their side. So this is one of the thing. And every, uh, say, bus driver, escort, everybody is wearing mask properly. Mm -hmm. And all handrails or entire entire thing has to be sanitized in a proper manner. They will be having hand sanitizer in addition to what we are doing. Mm. So 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 having maybe we may have hybrid uh, teaching learning process, but I think number of trips will be minimum doubled. Double. And for which we are not going to charge anything from the parent. Mm. This will be our call. Mm. Basically, the fuel cost will be doubled, but it is okay. So we are prepared, like like few of our teachers are coming on rotation. So because of certain exam and other problem, uh, planning, we are going. Uh, so so uh, this may continue for about a year, what I yeah. feel. Because, because next one year is also critical for all of us. So, so, and and uh, we can use, say, auto dispensers and all these things uh, instead of, say, hand spray or something like that. Auto scanners are also came up so once anybody is entering it will give the beep give the temperature if you can do the preset because that has been 
uh, integrated in lot of uh, buses in China and Europe that we have checked. So, so we have got that instrument as well, but it has it has not been fitted with all the buses as of now. But anybody is crossing the limit, it will give you the beep sound, which is which is very good, very very good instead of uh, doing manually if somebody is missed in a dark or any situation. So that alert is very important, very very important. Mm. And it is that temperature, whatever we are doing this, this is being also integrated with the student's ID. So where uh, we have got uh, this also one of the parameters from the CII uh, that we had got the seminar. So you have to analyze the temperature internationally. It is there. It is not just the reading. You must analyze every 10 days the, the, the temperature level of each and every student. So we are doing thrice in a day. That what we plan. So while boarding the bus as well as inside the school and while going out from the school. And it will not take much of time. We have to did some some uh, um, uh, trial runs, so it will uh, we we have, we need to spend maximum five minutes for each check mm. for these three checks at different mm. intervals. So this will really help because anybody may have this asymptomatic. So which day the temperature varied, or so if there is an abnormal in temperature of each day, so ten days there is a one day particular day the temperature is. So it will give some sort of uh, alarm because this is being done in some hospitals so we have we have a lot of doctors and they suggested you must go for this so we are trying to integrate these facilities so these are wonderful sir wonderful sir thank you so much uh, ali uh, you already have spoken about the auto dispensing systems in some of your buses uh, on on the on the cell uh, side on the demand side what has been the response to these new moves been like are all, a lot of schools upgrading to these new systems? So uh, I always believe that adversity has always been the mother of all inventions. Mm -hmm. Invent. So uh, this is a very good opportunity for, uh, you know, mm -hmm. cutting down all the flap or the expenses that we had. And uh, Poonam Mama very rightly said that because of this online, uh, you know, this pandemic has actually brought out an on online revolution for everyone. Uh, for us also as a company, uh, our travel cost used to be huge because we always believed uh, the, the etiquette was to sit in front of your customer and then talk and then, you know, sell it. But we realized that just by doing an online thing, we have cut down our travel cost so much and we are getting everything done twice as much as we used to do earlier. So I think this is more of an opportunity for us to see that how we can uh, change ourselves, how we can reinvent ourselves to look out for those things. So this one invention uh, that I'm saying auto dispenser, it's a very small thing. And Pradeep sir has very rightly said that uh, because of all these uh, issues, they have had to come up with new inventions and new possibilities in their mobility solutions. It's okay. Buses will take two rounds now. But yes, now the time that it used to take for students to get in and get out has been uh, reduced because of technology. We have RFID tags for every student's uh, iCard now. So uh, a parent mm -hmm. sitting at home can see where his kid is and how far uh, they can be ready five minutes before the bus even comes to the stop because of uh, the GPS that they are tracking on that bus. So all these inventions are there. Uh, like I said, one of the invention was the auto dispenser that is there. The, uh, the other uh, such uh, invention that we keep on seeing is like one of the spray mist which was being installed in some of the school buses. Uh, that would uh, actually make it easier and very, very, in, it, it would be done in very less time for the buses to be exhumed or fumigated. Uh, so uh, uh, once the schools open, I am sure the uh, local entrepreneur and the Indian uh, businessman will awaken and we will get to see a lot of such inventions again, I am mm. sure. Thank you so much, Ali. Uh, I think we have taken most of the questions, we've answered them, and I think we've had a brilliant discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just one thing that, you know, coming from the notebook background that I am, right? This has been on our wish list for a while now. And since I have the three of you here, I might as well ask this question. One of the things that we tried to do initially was saying that, can there be screens inside a bus? We know Ola cabs were having screens where they were consuming content. But if there are long commute times in a city like Bangalore, commute time to school can be anything between an hour, hour and a half. 
can there be educational content inside the bus can the bus ride also be part of the educational experience munamba if i may start with you <laughs> give me some time let uh, pradeep sure. sir answer the question yes, let me think yeah i think uh, uh, some content may not be a very good idea at this juncture because we have applied this thing uh, actually we did uh, something and uh, and we found that the the child who is commuting say between between uh, 15 minutes to 30 minutes or leaving that place they are missing some 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 contents unless it is being it is a very short content of 5 uh, minutes because the child should not miss so there is a psychological impact Uh, on the child so i don't think so it is a very good idea we mm. should not distract it is a time to connect with each other maybe mm. a, a, a child is singing and other is uh, other is also responding to that because anyway they are on the social media they should not watch something it is it is completely distraction which is which is happening and every parents are complaining the same thing in every day i think we don't allow mobile phones inside the school premises till now including that class 12 child child so that is our one of the biggest usp so including the teachers they have to submit they can't take any call during their lecture and other things so we are very strict in that so so we have very uh, so i think this is very important they yeah. should correct socially Not i strongly on- agree uh, agrawal saab whatever you have said i feel that uh, being in nuclear family the students are coming out from their houses to meet each other to uh, share their feelings to share their views and bus is the very uh, commuting time is the best time when they can share they can chat they can talk to their friend and, and another children let them talk screen time is already lot lot of screen uh, time is there at at home i have cancelled all my movie time and all i used to say do that what you cannot do at home so, so you should be busy with your friends and other things the screen time enough you get at home so i even i do not agree sir rightly said sir i would like to add one more thing that that we feel that it's a ragging in in uh, having in buses itself because there is a teacher there is a cctv <laughs> so so apart from classroom classroom is also covered with cctv corridors are also covered covered yes cctvs so at least they should have some childhood yes so, so so i think i think they should enjoy this is the time when they are spending 15 minutes to 30 minutes maximum 15 minutes to 30 minutes because we have made a schedule of 40 minutes maximum commuting time because we are not dropping at their houses this is our again the different criteria so it is uh, basically pick up points irrespective of that because maximum time should be 40 minutes that we have standardized mm. so even the bus is vacant it cannot be more than 40 minutes in any route we need to add Very another good. bus so that is uh, one, one one difference which we are facing from other schools from dps and other because they are they are uh, they are attending all the houses so we can't do that so that is our initial that this is one of the parameters so i think they should have some natural time it's very important for the child sir believe you me i thank my stars every given day that i went to school when there were no cctvs <laughs> hmm. well But this has been fantastic protocol, yes sir that is the new protocol yeah completely understand no no Because i was posco posco act is very powerful now so any sexual harassment in classrooms even toilets so outside the of the toilet so so it is very very important so we we are we have to be guided by the supreme court and other norms so so it is really very very much helpful mm-hmm. so you can't avoid having cctvs in the classrooms and other places sir i was definitely speaking on a lighter vein because i i do appreciate the kind of safety that schools have built into each and every one of their processes not just commute or be the corridor but in general the school experience and i'm sure ali being a young parent would be somebody who would be very vocal in favor of all of that well thank you so much this has been a wonderful discussion if you have any closing statements you could make that now otherwise i will hand this back to achin achin i think we've had a fantastic discussion 
time for you to take over and say thank you. So really, a uh, great discussion we had. Uh, and very seamless and very informative. I must appreciate. But sir, I think very, very well deliberated. And also going to one of your answers in response to uh, a question that you got. Undoubtedly accurate and razor sharp, just as you are. Pradeep ji, each interaction with you has been really, very enriching. I remember one evening, if I share with our viewers today, when I had an interaction with Pradeep ji, and we had a very long discussion about notebook pedagogy. And your valued inputs on the same, really wonderful. And also what you said today, it's a great example to be able to integrate the whole solution. Devoting 100% commute to school buses without mm -hmm. any exception. Indeed, if I look at things from today's working parents' perspective with very little family support in nuclear families, this undoubtedly is a very practical solution. And also very impressed with COVID safety norms that you shared with all of us. Be it partial occupancy of school buses, yes. regular fumigation, safety checks. I'm sure our esteemed educators who are here, many of whom are at the helm in decision making position in their own institutions, will definitely take a note of it. <coughs> A lot of good work that many of them are already doing. I'm sure this adds further value to it. Mr. Rizvi, great listening to you. You have very appropriately highlighted the challenges in that last section of population phase, as you shared with all of us. Not only education, but even access to basic facilities at times. But undoubtedly, as a nation, a lot of good work has happened, and we have moved from strength to strength. Like as we shared numbers with regard to school access for a large section of population within one kilometer radius, which is an achievement even by developed world standards. And yes, what you and Bharat sir shared with all of us about your school commute reminds me of my school days. I used to take a one half hour school bus ride each way and I was very fortunate crossing a river a hydroelectric project and overseeing small hills along the way. And here, some of those friendships that we, have, that we formed during the journey survived the test of time. Journeys of sitting next to each other and exploring the world through the bus window. I think a very valid point you made with regard to socializing part, which Pradeep you also mentioned. Puna ma'am, some really uh, great ideas. I really appreciate the fact the way you came, the way you deliberated on various issues, and also, or particularly, how you really helped in terms of being able to seamlessly integrate the entire discussion. I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So I think really a wonderful discussion we had. I thank all our esteemed viewers for being a part of this. It's with your support that Together for Education webinar has grown from strength to strength. Thank you. Take care and goodbye. Thank you very much, Achan. Thank you very much. Namaskaram. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Namaskar.